Hello everyone, it's Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, scene change, I am in San Antonio. I just finished my first day with Mickey Chapelier. You've met Mickey, she's been on the channel a few times, and we are teaching at Patty's, Patty's Sewing Center here in San Antonio. So I'm in my hotel getting this video ready to come out tomorrow. You can see I have my whole setup. I have my designer computer. I have my Mac that I do all of my regular stuff on. And then I have my iPad because this, uh, I can hook up to the internet and um, I feel more secure when it's just this one. But um, a few things. So today's video, we are in Pro Stitcher Designer and we are going to talk about the artwork tool and we're gonna talk about our anchor points. So that's what we're gonna hit on today in that. Um, some really exciting things happened this last week. One, we have a house, so super excited. Um, it just closed actually today. So when I get home, I will be a homeowner again, but I'll only be in Palm Springs for a day before I leave. Um, next week, I'm gonna be in Celeste, Texas. So uh, me and Mickey will be there doing a truck event. Yes, because it's two people. So we'll have 12 machines. So um, that's at Quilt Mercantile. So if you're interested, call the shop. Um, uh, we're gonna do some hands-on events there. Um, and the week after that, I will be in Plano, Texas at my Stitch House. So one day you'll come in and work with Terry. The next you'll be with Mickey and I on the long arms. Super excited for this. Um, it's gonna be a fabulous event all around. Um, that's Stitch House in uh, Plano. So uh, if you're interested in either of those, give those shops a call. It is uh, Thursday, July 15th, just in case you're not watching this on thir or Friday, July 16th. Um, so if you're in the future and you're like, oh, I wanna take this class, it already happened. Maybe, I don't know, who knows when you're gonna see this. So uh, we will be in Celeste. Let me actually pull up a calendar and I'll tell you. So we are going to be in Celeste, Texas. The 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Um, those events are going to be two days, so you'll either come Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, Saturday. And then we'll be in Plano the 28th through the 31st. And you, depending on when you come in, there's specific days to sign up for. So um, if you're interested in either of those, Quilt Mercantile and Celeste, or uh, Stitch House in Plano, give them a ring. Um, either one, you're going to have fun. You'll have Mickey and I. We're just going to have a good time. Um, another thing that happened is I am teaming up with Quiltable and my friend Beth at Eva Page Quilt Designs, who um, is, Beth is the inventor creator of the accordion sewn half square triangles. So it's, an, it's a method to make half square triangles where they're all different. It's super fun. Um, a little confusing at first, but once you get it, you're like, wait, why didn't I think of this? Um, she makes it so easy and she is doing a quilt along. So it is called, I have my notes, um, it's called Bloomer Bust. So it's a Bloomer Bust quilt along hosted by Eva Page Quilt Designs. You can find her on Facebook. It, it's uh, Her business is named after her twins. So it's Eva Page. So it's E-V-A-P-A-I-G-E, -E, one word, so Eva Page Quilt Designs, find her on Facebook, or um, it's evapagequilts.com. Um, I believe more info about the, the quilt along is on Facebook, so check out Facebook, um, message on one of her posts. She posts a picture of the quilt. Um, if you're scrappy, I mean, she's the she's your person. She is such a, she's a scrappy quilter. I am not scrappy. I get so stressed out when I do her stuff, but I love it. I mean, her stuff looks so great, so I am always love to work on them. Um, it just stresses me out to get that scrappy. And like you may, she may say, get 15 fabrics and I'll get three. And I'm like, oh, I'm scrappy man. So um, check that out. I, it's gonna run um, all of September. So it's gonna actually start August 27th. And um, how it's gonna work, Every Thursday, she's gonna release a video. I believe Fridays, she's gonna do a live, like, so you can come and ask questions if you have them. Um, she will teach you her accordion half square triangle method. Um, so if you don't know that, you can watch and learn. She also is giving discounts on the handouts for that. Um, again, if you haven't done it, it's great. Her patterns are so awesome. She has two books that I have. I mean, I bought my mother-in-law and my mom a book. I sent them with the uh, how to make the accordions. Like, 
I, I love her stuff. I just, it's, she's so creative. So this is a bloomer bust. So Jen Eskridge, the brand manager over at Quiltable, her and her team, which is her and Kathy Zimmerman, uh, are going to create some designs specific for this quilt along that will go with this quilt. Um, I'm super excited because they're going to create an array of them. Beth will choose her favorite one, and then I will take the quilt top. I will take the one that Beth chose, and I will make a video doing edge to edge with my robotic system on my handy quilter. Now, do you have to have a robotic system to do the quilt along? No. Do you have to have a handy quilter to use the robotics um, from Quiltable? No. Um, Quiltable sells designs for every machine out there, different file types, so you can have any brand and you are okay, you're in the clear. Um, they will be a purchase designs, so if you want it to look like Beth's, you're gonna have that option. If you want to use a different one that Quiltable came up with, you have that option. So it's just fun. It's just kind of this collaboration where all three of us are getting together. I 100% have the easy part because all I have to do is quilt it. Um, I quilt some other quilts for Beth, and um, actually I have one that she's she's gonna send me, and I told her, I said, we're moving, I can't take it yet, but please hold off because I really wanna quilt that for you. Because once I saw it, I, all I thought was uh, free motion quilting and custom, and I'm just gonna make it fabulous, like I do. Like I try to do. Um, so I think it's gonna be $20. You'll have to check over at the Eva Page Quilt Designs on Facebook and get the info from it. Signups will start August 5th. The stitch along or quilt along starts on the 27th of August and it will run through probably the 30th, which is, is a day sooner than, uh, I think it's technically the first, but um, she has two daughters going off to college and I think one of them has something to do on the first. So they're gonna push it up to the 30th. The first uh, will be my Friday video and it will drop with the quilting of the, um, of the quilt. So I'm super excited. Um, it's the final quilt is 80 inches square and it is the course will be offered through course craft is there anything else i missed i probably missed something if you're interested i'm gonna i'm gonna link her down below i'll link her on facebook i'll link her on instagram or uh and yeah instagram i think she has instagram i don't actually know if she has an instagram i feel like i like it whatever i'll link her everywhere i'll link quiltable everywhere uh just super excited for this um but Bum, bum, blah, blah. Without further ado, let's get into designer and talk about those artworks and anchor points. See you back here in a second. All right, here we are. We are in Pro Stitcher Designer, Pro Stitcher Studio, and um, we are going to talk about the artwork tool today, which is over here. It's under tools, artwork, where we have where it says shapes, and um, anchor points. So if I click up at the top. And as you see, I hover over, it says artwork, input artwork. If I click on the top where it's green, it will default to the last one you made. The last thing I made was a flower, so I can see my crosshairs in the flower. I don't want to make a flower, let's just start at the top. So I'm going to hit under it, let's make, so, you, so I show you what I did. I'm going to highlight artwork, it turns green, hit the little carrot, and now these are all of the pre-loaded designs that you can stitch out yourself. Um, so let's just start and we'll go through each of these. Rectangle. A rectangle has four sides with right angles in the corners. So there's my rectangle. If I want a perfect square, I'm gonna hold the control key on my keyboard and I can create a perfect square. You can see that as, my, as I'm moving to the right, I'm not moving the diagonal, the whole thing is increasing, decreasing. I get a perfect square that way. So anytime you want that design to kind of be locked in its quote unquote perfect form, you're gonna hold that control. Now, when I use this, I'm gonna zoom out because right now look, we're in like that four by four, a uh, four by two um, square. I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna turn off my grid just to make it easier for you all to see. I'm also gonna make sure my, uh, my snap to grid is on, which I right clicked on the ruler bar and make sure it says snap to grid. Uh, I'm going to turn my anchor points off because I don't need those. So I will move these. I'm just going to delete these actually. So if I'm making a square and I know exactly how big I need it, I will select my rectangle, just draw something. It doesn't have to be the exact size. Uh, when you're done drawing, I'm going to come over here and hit my select tool. It gets selected. It gives me all my dots. I could grab these and make it bigger and do all that. But over on the sidebar, we have transform, 
So you only have this if you have something selected. I'm going to hit transform and say I know I need this uh, 10 by 10. I can try to make it 10 by 10 or I can just make it any size and come in here and use my keyboard to change it 10 by 10, hit apply. And now I have, oops, a 10 by 10 square. So that's usually how I make things bigger and um, if I know exactly how big they need to be, but you do have the option to hold the control button down. The next is ellipse. Let's just think of, a, of an ellipse as an oval. I can make it long, I can make it skinny, I can make it horizontal. Anything I want to do, if I hold the control, I'm going to get a perfect circle. So that is what your ellipse is going to do. I'm just going to select these and delete it. Our next is uh, triangle. Again, this will make triangles. It will make any type of triangle we want. If I hold control, it will make an equilateral triangle, which means every side is the same length. The diamond, we can do tall skinny diamonds. We can do long skinny diamonds. I can hold control and I get a square on point because a square on point is a diamond. Um, when I digitized the... Uh, my, I call it my glowworm quilt that has uh, some diamonds stitched in it. I just drew a diamond, came over, I selected it, transform tool, and I needed them um, four inches, uh, or no, two inches wide by four inches tall. Apply, and then I digitized this design, saved it, took it to my pro stitcher and said stitch, 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 and it was done. So um, less than two minutes to come in here and digitize something. Remember, I call myself the non-artist, I love these artwork tools. I love these shapes because I can just make them super easy. Do you need a star? Do you need a tall skinny star? An upside down star? A fat star? Or a perfect star? I'm holding control. There's my perfect star. For those of you in uh, Texas, here you are, your Texas star. Um, so again, super easy. I just digitize a star. I could take it and stitch it out. Let's see, I'm going to select everything and delete it, just to close my screen out. Rounded is a rounded corner rectangle. Oops, I just hit hexagon. So um, that's what rounded is going to do. It's going to give you round corners. I can hold, uh, hold control, and it's going to give me a square with rounded corners. So that is what rounded will do. Uh, what's the next one? Hexagon. This is going to give you a hexagon. The one thing with the hexagon, it also gives you rounded corners. Not a huge fan of that. There are ways to fix it. Um, but you can also go in with your line tool and just kind of trace over to give yourself a perfect uh, hexy. We have a leaf. I love this leaf design. We actually have a ruler that looks just like this. The uh, pedal pusher. But um, I can make different size leaves. Now, when we get over to th these tools, our create tools, and you do it with the leaf, holy moly, it's going to be fun. It makes it some amazing, amazing designs really easy and fast. Uh, we have a heart. So do you need to digitize a heart? Do you need a fat heart? Do you need a long skinny heart? Or do you need a perfect heart? And with this one, I held down control. A flower. This one's a perfect flower. I held down control. Maybe I don't want a perfect flower. I, I'm kind of having fun putting putting these designs in other designs. Look at that. Oh, do you have a do you have a cutter machine? Do you have a Cricut or a scanning cut? I could save this as an SVG file and then cut that out. Remember, save this as an SVG. Save this. I mean, outside the box. We're supposed to be doing quilting designs, but you can do anything with this. And the last is the spiral. Um, actually, I'm going to cancel and clear out my screen again. Delete. So spirals, there's four different types. There is a single spiral. I'm going to leave my revolutions at four. And this is a single spiral. And you can tell it's four revolutions because I can count one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Um, I'm going to hold control. And this is a perfect spiral. So this one, uh, I wonder, this one kind of looks perfect, but let's see what it is. Uh, nope, I want to hit this one. And it's almost, it's 3.75 wide and 4 tall. So maybe I'll put this at like 2.5, just so we can see it look different. 
So there's a tall skinny one and a perfect one. And this one's probably 5 by 5 ish or something. 5.25, I guessed. Um, so the next one, I'm going to click spiral again. You have to click spiral again every time you want to change it. This uh, pop up will always come up. We're going to hit swirl. Still, we're going to stay at 4. And there's my swirl. Here's my perfect swirl. So we can kind of see, swirl reminds me of a nautilus shell. Uh, I'm going to click spiral and we're going to do a double spiral. And you can see it starts on one side, ends on the other. So it's going to go in, swirl out in the middle, and then swirl out. So this is only four rotations, but it's four of each. So there's actually eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And here's a perfect one. And last but not least, I want to move this over so we don't get confused. Look, I just accidentally made an edge-to-edge -edge design that fast. Um, the last spiral is going to be a double swirl. And here's my double swirl. And you see the, the um, entrance and exit are both on the right. And here's my perfect double swirl. So look, I just did a swirl edge-to-edge -edge digitized. Now, is this going to be the perfect edge-to-edge? -edge? No, because the start point in this swirl is in the center. Um, and so is it. It is here too, but I could go in and do a little bit of editing and have this do an edge to edge really quick because I mean it's just copy and pasting, doing a few different things. Um, but those are our artwork tools. So let's jump over to Design Two. I'm going to make an ellipse, and I am also going to make some lines. And then I just hit right click to uh, be done with it and I'll hit select. So there are four types of anchor points. And we'll talk about anchor points a lot. Um, not today, I just want to kind of give you a rough idea of what anchor points are. But when you start editing, anchor points come into um, that editing function a lot, a lot more because you need to have the right point to do the job you want. So um, on my lines, we see that all of my lines the points are um, indicated as a square box. So these are called line points. If I hit this uh, ellipse, if I select on the ellipse, hit the line, um, you'll see the points here, they're round. These indicate it's some type of a smooth point. So if I select on, um, let's go back to the line. I'm going to select this point right here. You know it's selected and because it gets a little chubby. I could say I could say I call it making chubby points. I'm going to select these two points. They get a little bit fatter and they're blue squares. Um, but when I select one, nothing changes. You don't have any options to edit this line at all. When you select a smooth point, so I'm coming over back over here, and I select a smooth point, you get these handlebars. So I, I'm sure you can see them. There's one on the point before. There's the two on the point that you have selected and one on the point uh, um, after. Now I can select this point down here and the handlebars change. As you see, I no longer have the handlebar here and here because this handlebar and this handlebar do not affect this part of the curve, whereas this one and this one do. So if I'm going to come back to this side just so we can see it better, if I select on one of these and I um, click and hold and move my mouse, I am changing and editing that curve. Okay? I'm going to let go. It holds it there, and I have the phantom line behind it, which um, shows you what the design looked like. And it's going to stay there until we hit spacebar or select or Q or any of those, or we select something else, or we zoom in and out. Um, I can also use this handlebar which now will select the point that this handlebar is connected to, and I can move this one. So do you see how these handlebars, as I pull out, they both grow, and as I push them in, they both um, shrink, and they, they're staying the same size? These are symmetrical. They're, this is a symmetrical point. This is an indication of a symmetrical point. And if I right-click on this node, this anchor point, um, also known as nodes. So if you hear someone call them a node, it's just in some programs, that's what they're called. 
we have four types. We have the line, we have a cusp, we have a smooth, and we have a symmetrical. So a symmetrical point, anchor point, when you move one anchor point, it stays symmetrical to the one across from it. So this is a symmetrical point. Now, this is also a symmetrical point. So all of these are symmetrical points on this ellipse. It's just the natural way that an ellipse is drawn. If I right click on this point and I change it to a cusp, you can't see anything. It didn't indicate anything was changed, but watch when I grab this handlebar. Do you see how I can move one without moving the other? Now a cusp, a cusp point lets you edit one side of that node, one side of that anchor point without affecting the other one. I can come and swing this one around and change it any way I want and not have any interference with the other side. Now, um, I'm going to right click up here and um, it's already, we already know it's a symmetrical point. So let's make this one a cusp one as well. And I can kind of fold this in and we'll make this one a cusp one and change this a little bit. And now I'm going to zoom out and this is my new shape. Now this looks a little funky over here and like these two kind of look a little weird. So I can select those two. And you can select multiple points at a time. I drag and drop the box over it. I can also hit control and click the points. And you can see they um, get chubby. I, say, I call it making a chubby point. But I just want these two. And I'm going to right click on this one. And I'm going to say, ooh, I want you to smooth this line out for me. And see how it kind of came in and made that, that path more... Um, I'm going to say more enjoyable. It makes it nicer to look at. This is a very modern design. I feel like I need this in the new house. But um, I'm going to hit select and move this over so we don't get confused. Oh, and let's turn off our grid. I'm like, something's weird. So right here, like this is kind of a harsh point. I can go to my shape tool and I'm going over here to select it with my shape tool. I think I forgot to say that. And I only want to change this one. I'll change this one into a smooth one. And I do not like how, what it did there. So I'm just going back and I'm going to hey, undo. I wasn't a fan of what you did. I like this better. Um, but I can come in and kind of smooth these, uh, smooth these lines out and stuff if I wanted to. So um, if you do have line points, so I'm going to come back over here on my line design. I could select this whole design. Oops, I missed one. I can select all the points on this line and change them into smooth. Now that's kind of nice. I could do the same thing and take all of these and now change them into a line and it made a diamond. Now if I do that again and smooth these out, it should make that ellipse again because they, those points never moved. I just moved the um, anchors for it. So, I mean, there's a lot of things to do. It's something you got to come in here and you got to play with it. Um, sometimes, if you have a line point, we always suggest turning it into a smooth point, and then you can decide if you need a cusp or you need a, sym a symmetrical point. And like right here, this is not a cusp, or this is not a symmetrical point because this handlebar is. Uh, shorter than this handlebar. They still move together, but see how it won't, um, the other one is not getting larger. It's not symmetrical. It's just a smooth point. If I needed to move this side, and, uh, or if I needed to move this side and I didn't want the other side to change, I could always right click, turn it to a cusp, and now I have editing power. So those are the four types of points. We have the line, the cusp, the smooth, and the symmetrical. So um, play with it, check out, see what you can do. Um, one of the really fun things that kind of Jen Eskridge was doing when she was teaching class is she would make a design and she always comes in and just changes some points and see what, see, to see what it does. This pedal pusher ruler, for those of you who love ruler work. Um, it's very similar to one of the rulers there, 
or the one of the, uh, one of the designs in that pedal pusher. So lots of fun things you can do. Remember, this was a diamond, and it's a diamond with smooth points. Um, even if I were just to be like, yay. Oops, I didn't, shouldn't have went that far. But you can also just grab that point and bring it in somewhere else. Let me take out this and this and change them all to smooth. Oh, I thought something really fun was going to happen, and it obviously didn't. That's ugly. We're going to delete that. Um, but those are our four points. Those are our work tools. Um, I hope you are enjoying the um, designer series, and you are playing with it and just kind of hitting buttons. It's all about hitting buttons and seeing what they do and having a good time doing it. So um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll see you right back here in a second. All right, everyone, as always, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so you're notified when new videos drop. You do have to have notif notifications on, but if you do, you will get a ding, and they'll say, Adam's so fun, it's a new video. Um, the long arm will be up soon. I have a house now. We just got to get it set up. I just have to be in town to do that. So um, it probably it won't be until August, but it'll be up as soon as I can. And then we'll get some more like stitching videos out. I think I'm finally going to do a Borders series. So um, it will coincide with the designer and all that. So that's coming up in August. Um, what other things do we have? Uh, don't forget, we'll be in Celeste at Quilt Mercantile and at Stitch House in Plano. Um, follow me on social media, Adam's So Fun, and that's with an SEW on Facebook and Instagram. And as always, at the end of the day, it's just quilting. You better be having a good time or you're not going to want to do it. Thank you for joining me. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. We hit 4,000 followers. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Um, I will be giving away a roll of batting. Uh, Quilter's Dream, 80-20. That's my favorite to use. Uh, I think it's a queen roll. It might be a king roll. I don't even know. I haven't decided yet, but I can't do it this week because I'm not home. So, uh, probably won't happen until right... I don't want to wait three weeks, but it probably won't happen until August so I can actually be home and connect with you all while I do it. But, um, thank you so all. Like, from the bottom of my heart, seriously. I can't believe... I would have never, six months ago thought that I would have a YouTube channel that had 4,000 followers. So uh, it just keeps growing. The community keeps getting bigger and bigger. Uh, make sure you follow me on social media where we can chat and you can leave comments. And if you have questions, I'm always here to help. So thank you. And we'll see you next week with a new video. Bye, everyone.